What's up fams, welcome back to my channel and today I want to do a little quick video for you guys since now we're in the month of October and Halloween, well pretty much Halloween month is here. Today I'm going to make a quick top 10 horror movies that you guys should check out this year. And don't, and don't worry if I don't mention a film that I should have mentioned or a cult film that I should have mentioned or any films that you would love for me to mention, don't worry, I will make another video for you guys. So without further ado, let's do, let's get on to it. Coming up right now and I hope you guys enjoy the show. All right, quiet on set. Scene one, take one. Action. I'm going to be very quick, actually, well, pretty much very brief with this list. So let's let's get on to it. Coming up at number 10, we have Body Bags. Yeah, the John Carpenter anthology film. I, and I also believe Toby Hooper is in the film and also even Wes Craven makes an acting cameo, which I, I love that a lot. It's actually an anthology film of John Carpenter plays this mortician or undertaker guy. And he's, and actually, surprisingly, John Carpenter, in my opinion, he's really good at acting. I don't know why, but he does a good performance. But he introduces to you guys, and it just well, showing like a body bag or a body part, and it transitions to a short film, a series of four films done by a different director. And basically, one of them is where Mark Hamill plays a baseball player, and he loses, and he has a great eye, and he loses his eye, and then they save his, luckily he's arrived, and they save his life, but one, but they give him, a, and they give him a new eye, but he doesn't know that it is a eye of a serial killer. Awesome. All right. Now let's move on to number nine. And at number nine, we have Tales from the Crypt presents Demon Knight. Oh my goodness, I really, I freaking love this movie. It's basically a story about a guy that's running away from this agent looking guy, but actually this agent is actually a demon or a demon summoner who is, who summons demons from the ground to go after what this guy is have. This guy just goes, looks for a refugee place. Actually, Jada Pickett Smith is one of the people who helps him out. And so, so these demon guys summons these demons to go after what this guy has. And I'm not going to tell you what this guy has, but he wants it so he can pretty much take over the world. And the demon guy is actually played by Billy Zane. It's awesome. There's a nice little horror comedy too. And Billy Zane, holy crap, you can tell this dude is having a fuck ton of fun making this movie. All right, moving on to number eight. And at number eight, we have Dracula, the hammer version or horror of Dracula. Basically, it's a, it's in the United States. Basically, it's an adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula, but this time it's being played by Christopher Lee. And boy, oh boy, it's iconic. And also Van Helsing is being played by Peter Cushing. So, man, what more can you want? What more, what more can I say, honestly? I don't want to say much, but is if you guys are a fan of Dracula, but you guys don't mind a little bit of creative freedom, Hammer is for you. And also this Hammer it was known for introducing color to these adaptations and in introducing bright red blood. It's awesome. All right, let's move on to number seven. Coming up at number seven is a film that is near dear to my heart and it is called Pumpkinhead. Now, Pumpkinhead is a story about a man played by Lance Henderson known as Ed Harley who has his son accidentally killed by a group of teenagers. So he goes up into the woods and finds this witch named Haggis who summons this demon called Pumpkinhead to exact revenge on him. What he does not know is that there's a ton of precautions of getting revenge and it's basically a story about revenge is like a poison and revenge is never a good thing. And basically it's one of those Cabin in the Woods films and it's kind of a slasher film since Pumpkinhead looks great. He just goes after the, these kids. This is great and a lot of the practical and gore effects are really good. And also this is Stan Wins' directorial debut and man, it's awesome. All right. Moving on to number six. And at number six, we have my favorite werewolf film of all time, An American Werewolf in London. So the story goes that two American guys are basically in, in the UK and England, and they get attacked by werewolves, a werewolf actually. And well, one of them dies, but one of them lives. And let's just say that yeah, things don't go off too well. So Rick Baker's special effects is phenomenal, and I, I can't. What, and also the I'm just glad that John Landis does a great job at dark comedy, and man, the especially the werewolf transitions is great, and they still hold up very well to this very day. And in my opinion, has the scariest looking werewolf of all time. I'm not gonna show you a picture because I want you to get to see this movie for for you. And actually, I am gonna. This is one of the movies that I am gonna review this October. So. Stay tuned for that, but man, an American Wolf in London. 
I actually find it scary, but yet funny at the same time. It's great. All right, coming in at number six, we have David Cronenberg's The Fly. Uh, as much as I do enjoy the original 1958 version with Vincent Price, I really do prefer this one's actually a bit more sad. The story is basically about this scientist guy that wants to create a teleporting device, but when he plays around with nature too much, he uses himself as a subject, but then a fly goes in and, well, mixes his, his DNA mixes with the fly, and slowly and gradually, he just grows text and turns to this half human, half fly, and it's just amazing. David Cronenberg. He, the, the gore, like the body horror effects look great. And it's just really sad, really. Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum have amazing chemistry. And actually, we're dating at the time when they meet the man. You can see it on screen, and man, it's just so sad at the end. I'm not gonna spoil what happens, but it's really sad. And also, you know how Rick and Morty had do these Cronenberg jokes? You're gonna see why. Coming in at number four, we have the, of course, the classic Halloween. Jar Carpenter's Halloween. Again, what can I say? It's one of my favorite films of all time. So, uh, quick plot is basically there's this babysitter named Laurie Strode who's being stalked by a killer who escaped an institution named Michael Myers and his doctor, Dr. Samuel Loomis, tries to go after and stop him. And basically that's, that's it of what I'm gonna say. If you haven't seen this movie, which I'm actually surprised, but at the same time, not surprised, I do recommend it. I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but still, it is very chilling for a independent low-budget. Actually, I do believe it's the first ever successful low-budget low film. I don't know, maybe Last House on the Last first. I don't know. Or Black Christmas. But Halloween, nonetheless, classic. What more can I say? Coming in at number three, we have an Australian film, recent film, that... I'm surprised I called, there's a couple of people that have not seen it and I do recommend you guys see it and it's called Jennifer Kent's The Babadook. Now The Babadook is basically a, a movie about a woman and her son being terrorized by this creature woodman named The Babadook. But you can interpret it in many ways. You can interpret, you can interpret it as a metaphor of grief or depression or just a woman trying to get over her, her, her husband. That's because her, the character's husband she, he, he died in an accident. So, and honestly, all I can say is that don't expect this to be a traditional horror monster film. Actually, in my opinion, the more terrifying part is the mother herself, really, and how realistic it is to hand to be. Because I know single moms in real life, I don't know what is, because, and I've seen how hard it is to be a single mom, so, less terrifying. And coming to number two, we have Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lips. My favorite Friday the 13th film of all time, so, Ooh, let's just get right to it. Basically, the story is Tommy Jarvis, who killed Jason in Friday the 13th Part 4, the final chapter. He digs up Jason's grave, and goes he goes nuts, and he just stabs Jason in the heart through with a metal pole stick thing, and lightning strikes, and then Jason's back to life, and Jason is back to wreaking heaven. Now it's up to Tommy Jarvis to stop him once again. That's all I gotta say. Basically, Tommy Glothen brought fresh new ideas into the Friday the 13th franchise, and it's funny, and actually I love the characters, my favorite characters are in this film, I just love every single character, this sissy, we also have the sheriff, the sheriff is actually really good, and man, and his deputy is fucking funny, of course Tommy Jarvis is great, mm. and Jason is phenomenal, actually I love how he has more expression, he has to play by CJ Graham, and it's freaking cool, but yeah, that's not much I can say right now, check it out. And coming in number one, my favorite horror film of all time is John Carpenter's The Thing. And really, this movie is perfect since we're still in the pandemic. What's the movie about? Well, ch well check this out. A s an alien spacecraft crash lands into the Earth for from a couple of billion to trillion years, actually. <laughs> a billion years, or, tr or millions of years. So, this, the movie just begins with a Norwegian helicopter chasing on a dog. But actually, it's a story about this. But, but, but also, I'm just going to skip all that and just get on to the, the core story. Basically, the core horror story is a alien that shapeshifts and it can imitate anybody or and, and well not really anything it has to be life but it imitates anybody so the true horror is uh, is trusting anybody it's all about trust and also these guys this american they are isolated from the world so it's hard to communicate and also yeah they're in they're in antarctica so what are they gonna do they're trapped with this thing and it's all about trust and anxiety. It's really intense. And the I just love every single build up stuff like that. I'm not gonna give away 
any spoilers for this movie. So that is actually my quick top 10 horror films you should watch in 2020. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys liked this video, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you share it with your friends. And make sure you guys hit that bell for notifications. So this is Javi from Javi Productions signing off. And I hope you guys enjoyed this show.